Hello again everyone, Edwin Lerner back once again. In this YouTube astrological segment, I'm going to be giving you my Aquarius April 2018 horoscope forecast. And yes, this does apply and pertain to the Sun, Moon, and Ascendant. Anyway, people, first thing up is, as far as April goes, uh, the Sun will be in Aries from the 1st until the 19th. So the third house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. So at this time for Aquarius, there can be a lot of concentration of energy, focus, and uh, attention uh, into uh, communications, uh, maybe people in your early education, short journeys, siblings, neighbors, and, and this could be and, and this could be applied perhaps with a lot of that Aries like courage, fortitude, uh, done with a lot of aggression, assertiveness, and just a lot of good energy in general because Aries energy of course can be very abundant and it is very energetic. But at the same time, just be careful and wary because you might be a little bit more confrontational and combative at this time than usual as far as siblings and neighbors go. And remember the third, uh, the sun, uh, where it is in the horoscope, could be where one wants to shine. And you might be really wanting to shine strongly in matters pertaining to communications in doing so with a lot of uh, really a, a lot of Aries uh, assertiveness, aggression, initiative and enterprise. Anyway, people, next thing up is as far as April goes, the sun will be in Taurus from the 19th until the 30th. So the fourth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. So at this time for Aquarius, there could be a lot of concentration of energy, attention and focus into matters uh, pertaining to the home and family roots, uh, traditions, the end of life, and, and really done with a lot of a deliberate, persistent, uh, methodical, uh, stable, and, and ponderous torus like energy, a lot of latent energy, being able to conserve it when you need it and applying it when you really need it, uh, the really need the most. And this could be about, I mean, Taurus energy, of course, it can be very economical and very shrewd as far as money goes. So this could be a lot of that ponderous energy, concentration of that ponderous energy into uh, making plans for uh, the end of life. And don't misconstrue this, people. I'm not saying that some that Aquarius is going to die or anything now, but, it, but what I'm saying is making the preparations for that end of life period by shrewd investing as an example and being shrewd as far as monetary matters go. And also a lot of persistent energy in the traditions and the roots and really loyal, stable, steadfast energy, a concentration of this into uh, in, in really into being very loyal, steadfast, and stable with home and family. Uh, so anyway, next thing up is the new moon will be in Aries on April 15th. So the third house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. So at this time, this could be the, perhaps the start of a new communication, uh, perhaps with a lot of Aries like aggression, assertiveness, and forcefulness. Uh, it could be about maybe a writing in areas like writing, which might be tied in with sports or something connected with firearms like gun control, something about law enforcement, competition, uh, combat, uh, fighting, and something that could be Aries uh, related. A new vehicle sometimes could be purchased with a lot of uh, Aries like impatience and be careful because Aries energy could be very impulsive and impetuous. Also perhaps a rekindled relationship, perhaps with a sibling or neighbor that could be an Aries sun, moon or ascendant or simply someone that embodies Aries like uh, characteristics and or maybe even someone from the early uh, education perhaps that you knew that might be a sun, moon or ascendant in Aries or someone that embodies Aries like uh, characteristics. So uh, anyway, people, next thing up is, well, the full moon will be in Scorpio on April 29th. So the 10th house is what will be emphasized and highlighted for Aquarius. So at this time, well, Aquarius might become uh, somewhat exasperated, um, uh, tired, full, so to speak, of a manipulative, surreptitious, nefarious, sneaky, uh, dominant parent, uh, authority figure at this time, a superior 
uh, or maybe or maybe just this kind of behavior that might be uh, adversely affecting one's uh, reputation of uh, perhaps surreptitious snaky like behavior and uh, in, in really in, in nefarious as well perhaps that might be impacting one's public image reputation this could also be about a dark secret that might be uh, unveiled at this time uh, that might be connected with the dominant parent it might be connected with someone prominent in your career an authority figure or a mystery uh, that or that solved that was associated with one of the things that I had just uh, mentioned so and also this could be about the completion or culmination of perhaps a uh, Scorpio like uh, career related uh, project which could be of course connected as for some examples connected with astrology called supernatural forensics locksmithing uh, do, uh, doing some kind of uh, investigation perhaps something with psychology psychiatry or psychology so anyway well, the next thing up is Mercury will be in Aries uh, and it'll be retro for about half the month. So the third house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. So at this time, uh, this could be about a lot of uh, aggressive, combative, outspoken, assertive and impetuous communications uh, with siblings, with neighbors and with people that you see in your general daily uh, communications. This could be a really active, restless period for the mind as well because you're talking about mercury in the third house it's really you're, you're looking like accidental dignity so to speak and really uh but at the same time remember that's aries energy so it's not just only restless it's very impatient and you don't really might not have a lot of follow through on a lot of sustained ideas and you might have one be coming around after another at this time but at the same time there can be a lot of original and pioneering uh, ways of thinking at this time and expressing this in your day-to-day -day communications and people that you know are prominent in your short journeys perhaps your siblings uh, your neighbors uh, perhaps as well so but remember too that it's going to be retro for about half the month so there'll be a little bit more review uh, before speaking of course I think it really helps perhaps with Aries especially because Aries energy of course is very outspoken brusque and abrupt to say the least next thing up Venus will be in Taurus as far as April goes from the first until the 24th so the fourth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted so at this time for uh, Aquarius this could be about a very strong love of peace stability tranquility and creature comforts in one's home and also people that you may be close uh, at home with uh, this could also be about a strong uh, enjoyment of methodical and persistent uh, uh, money-making ventures perhaps out of the home someone you're close at home with uh, maybe somebody that's uh, really tied into your roots and your traditions as well this could also be uh, about really putting a lot of value in uh, in really uh, persistence and in tenacity and maybe in getting to who you are at the core and also loving who you are at the core and in really uh, at, at the same time this is about what I mean one could value and one could be valuing the home life and family and in really um, in, in really doing so uh, I mean with a lot of that that Taurus uh, like I mean a lot of persistence in that and, and, and so on so really um, this could be as well perhaps um, really valuing uh, strongly uh, one's traditions and one's roots and doing so with a lot of Taurus like per, really a lot of um, steadfastness and with a lot of loyalty and if you're unattached this time Aquarius you might meet uh, somebody that might be um, a prospective significant other romantic partner that might be a Taurus Sun Moon or Ascendant or someone that simply embodies those characteristics someone that you might find close to home with might figure prominently maybe in some foundations you start and might be somebody that you might meet that might be introduced to you by a family member so anyway next thing up is Venus will be in Gemini as far as April goes from the 24th until the 30th 
So the fifth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. So first off, well, this could be a time where if you're unattached to queries, you might be more inclined to have two relationships going on simultaneously. And given that the, you're talking about the fifth house in Gemini, could be at least somewhat superficial. It could be about also enjoyment of mental games, perhaps with romantic partners. Uh, people that are prominent in your uh, enjoyment, your hobbies, that could be with children, and also value of intellectual games that are enjoyable, such as maybe Mastermind, uh, Chess, or Jenga, something where there's some mental agility involved. And also this could manifest perhaps in making money in some kind of communications field, uh, such as doing creative writing, or maybe doing something connected with dexterity, uh, such as auto mechanics, and in doing so, uh, refrigeration mechanics, doing so maybe with somebody that you love. It could be a, a romantic partner. It might be somebody that you just, uh, you know, might, might, you know, could be, a, it could be a child in some cases, one of your children. So uh, anyway, um, well, the next thing up is, well, Mars will be uh, in Capricorn, so the 12th house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. So at this time, while the situation uh, perhaps with people prominent in your private life might be a little bit more acrimonious and contentious than usual, uh, this could also be about uh, serious, disciplined, consistent, even ambitious-like energy injected into things of a private matter uh, at this time, things that you do in solitude and seclusion. Energy and vitality might be a little bit more diminished and reduced uh, than usual at this time. And remember that anger could, and acrimonious experiences can wind up leading to one's self undoing, in some cases lead to uh, some kind of uh, imprisonment at this time, especially if this is making a number of adverse aspects uh, to your uh, two natal uh, points in your chart. So um, also too, uh, the way this can manifest is perhaps uh, really um, trying to take action maybe into weeding out uh, perhaps uh, hidden adversaries at this time. And also this could be a development of some kind of hidden adversaries that are really ones that can be very marsh, like very combative, um, really, uh, people that are uh, just really, uh, you know, people that are looking for some kind of combat and confrontational. And at the same time, this could also manifest in, clan, in a clandestine affair, perhaps with somebody that might be, uh, like in some cases, a Capricorn sun, moon, or ascendant, or simply somebody that embodies uh, Capricorn-like characteristics. It could even be an older person. So anyway, uh, next thing up is, well, uh, Jupiter will be in Scorpio still, so the 10th house is will be emphasized and highlighted. It will be retro as far as April goes as well. Now, uh, as I've talked about in previous videos, that Jupiter can be paradoxical. It is very strongly benign and benevolent, but it could also uh, have a tendency to enlarge and expand issues. And this could expand and increase surreptitious, nefarious, and even manipulative and sneaky behavior that might adversely affect your reputation, your public image. This could be behavior that might be uh, coming from the dominant parent, which is often the father, or somebody prominent in your career. It could even be an authority figure in some instances. Now, also, too, this could be certain luck and fortune connected through a transformation of uh, one career, of one's career, uh, or through Scorpio career endeavors, such as astrology, the occult, supernatural, magic, uh, maybe. Uh, maybe some other things, including locksmithing, psychology, psychiatry, uh, forensics. Uh, so it's really um, about two, you, I think too, this is about where uh, there, this could be very fortuitous, I think for, so we're talking about Scorpio energy, for uh, perhaps going beyond the superficial and subterfuge in people that might be prominent in one's career, the dominant parent, really, and also it, it could even be authority figures in some cases as well. And, and also really given that it's going to be in retrograde, um, this as far as April goes, there could be a review of a profound deep philosophy that is tied in 
to one's stature in life and what one attains as far as career wise well, career ambitions and attainments so anyway next thing up is saturn will be in capricorn so the 12th house is what will be emphasized and highlighted so at this time for aquarius this could be a very strongly more introverted and introspective period uh for aquarius at this time uh dealing um sorrows might be dealt with more secretively at this time than usual uh any kind of despondency um that you're going through might not be it might be held back and suppressed and dealt with in private uh i have this i actually have saturn in the 12th house uh natally and this is a time which could be as i stated before by being very introspective and really dedication devotion to perhaps a lot of solitude and seclusion and there might be desire in some cases to retreat uh, from society uh, there could also be about maybe laborious work and seclusion sometimes government related and uh, it's going to be retrograde for part of this month so during that time this could be about a strong review of responsibilities toward one's private life in some cases it could be uh, a mental illness it could be some kind of something that's very depressing and uh, could also be about taking care of somebody uh, that might be debilitated or sickly, uh, somebody that might be in a situation that's uh, less fortunate uh, than you, such as somebody that might be in an impoverished situation or somebody that may be uh, homeless or hungry or, or oppressed, and that, and that debilitation or illness might be connected uh, with, with something Capricorn related such as the knees the bones or the joints so anyway next thing up is Uranus will be in Aries so the third house is what will be emphasized and highlighted so at this time this could be about a lot of extemporaneous and spontaneous ideas ideas may come very quickly and spontaneously at this time the thinking though might be a little bit more sporadic and erratic than usual you might have people be coming in and out of your life un unexpectedly unpredictably that were tied into your early education this could also be where friends might impact uh communications more and might figure more prominently in your short journeys at this time than usual remember that uranus is about electricity so it could be about shocking shocking behavior uh from siblings and neighbors at this time but remember that they could be there could be more susceptibility to maybe one of them getting uh electric shocks at this time so if you're in you know if you're doing any kind of electrical work in one of their homes or something just be extra careful and prudent and and, and give them uh let them be aware and cognizant of the precautions they have to take uh as far as wiring goes uh if they're not already uh knowledgeable uh regarding that so anyway um well uh, and also it could be more communication uh about uranus like uh things it could be about about innovations uh really uh computers electronics esoteric subjects such as astrology perhaps astronomy and aerospace as well and the thinking might be more ingenious at this time uh so anyway Neptune uh, will still be in Pisces so the second house is what will be emphasized and highlighted so at this time for Aquarius well Aquarius might mean you look at this uh, energy with Neptune it could be I mean Neptune energy could often be about dissipation and dissolving this could be about a dissipation dissolving of one's income at this time there may be sadly there might be values put in uh, I mean drugs alcohol might be more valued at this time than usual but at the same time it could also be matters with the metaphysical spirituality uh that might be valued more as well uh than usual and self-sacrifice also um there you could be more susceptible at this time to some kind of financial deception or fraud so just be careful uh, at this time uh Aquarius and also regarding your possessions and resources things uh, I mean possessions might have a little more tendency to disappear during this time than usual and it could be the result of carelessness or being or succumbing to thieves at this time you're just your guard is a little bit you know more dissipated your guard usually isn't as up as much during these Neptune 
periods uh, than usual and especially if you're getting uh, adverse aspects uh, from Neptune to natal points like say in your chart say if, if um, Nep transit Neptune is making an adverse aspect to your natal Mercury or maybe even the natal third house ruler as an example so anyway but there could be more conversations and communications about Neptune like uh, I'm sorry there could be more uh, money that might be made through something Neptunian such as astrology spirit mystery which is connected with the metaphysical spirituality photography chemistry illusions such as special effects pharmaceutical work anyway next thing up is Pluto will be in Capricorn so the 12th house is what will be emphasized and highlighted for Aquarius so at this time well uh, first thing off is I know a lot of you don't want me to say uh, the dreaded D word at this time but you know uh, I do it anyway uh, generally speaking uh, and this could actually be a literal death of somebody that might figure prominently in your uh, private life and remember too that the, the 12th house could also represent an uncle or uh, an aunt because the 10th house is like the gen the dominant parent which is often the father and when you go uh, two houses uh, from that in order that is that represents the siblings of that of that parent so this could be an aunt or an uncle that you know demise during this time or death at this uh, particular time as well so it's just something to look at this could also be about one's obliteration or destruction of one's private life and at least seeming like that but remember that uh, Pluto is also about rebirth and regeneration so when something uh, leaves or maybe destroyed it's often supplanted regu uh, later on and also too this could be about dealing with very powerful hidden adversaries at this time uh, also too um, this could be uh, at also in some cases isolated cases it could be in a uh, dealing with some kind of mental illness and obsessive compulsive disorder in some cases or it might give more power to it at this time and uh, also to this could be more power giving more power positively in other 12th house matters such as spirituality uh, the metaphysical and uh, and really um, in maybe giving power to helping those less fortunate than yourself such as the impoverished the oppressed and the homeless at this time and but at the same time this I talked about hidden powerful hidden adversaries it could also be the way this can manifest is maybe the destruction of them maybe for, whether it's through incarceration or uh, what have you I'm not saying you're gonna go out and literally destroy them but what I'm saying is it could be the the ending of them for whatever reason whether it's through winning in a you know um, whether they for whatever reasons they just uh, they they just they just go so I mean it might be uncovering them and then maybe be defeating them in a courtroom so anyway well next thing up is uh, the north node will be in Leo so the seventh house is what will be emphasized and highlighted so at this time for uh, Aquarius this could be about when you have the north node in transit this could often be about uh, confronting and addressing issues and at this time this could be the way this can manifest is having to confront perhaps an arrogant domineering bombastic overbearing a uh, significant other or business partner it might be an open adversary in some cases it might actually be an actual literal Sun moon or ascendant in Leo or someone that simply embodies those characteristics uh, this could be too about maybe having to be a little bit more extravagant over uh, documents at this time and court fees uh, being more magnanimous and generous with the significant other in matters pertaining to a business partnership and also just getting attention and recognition from others in general for what you've uh, done whether you you know expressed yourself through generosity with people or what have you also this could be a time where you might be directed toward uh, maybe some business connection where you collaborate with some th someone on something Leo related such as something with the entertainment or theater uh, industry at this time or being doing some kind of movie production even something where you're getting some kind of notoriety and attention it could even be through YouTube videos as an example so anyway um, 
Well, the next thing up is the Black Moon Lilith will be in Capricorn, so the 12th house is what will be uh, emphasized and highlighted. So at this time uh, for Aquarius, this could be about uh, perhaps the revelation or unveiling of uh, somebody in your private life that might be uh, exhibiting tyrannical, ruthless, undemonstrative, overambitious qualities. Uh, what when you talk about the Black Moon Loth, it could also be about what may put us in that state of trepidation and fright. And this could be about maybe relinquishing the authority in one's private life, or maybe uh, losing that ability to uh, maybe even consistently uh, help those less fortunate uh, than than oneself. And uh, and really uh, another thing too, how this could uh, manifest. Remember that I mean. When you're talking about um, the Black Moon Oath, it could be about a revelation or unveiling of a formidable adversary, when this case could be a literal Capricorn Sun, Moon, or Ascendant, or simply someone that embodies those characteristics. Remember, we're talking about the 12th house of hidden adversaries, so this hidden adversary might actually come out at this time. And also, too, um, this could be, uh, I mean, when you look at this as well, this could be about uh, something in unveiling a revelation that uh, Aquarius doesn't want to come out, but maybe for whatever reason it does. In some cases, it could be a depressing or some kind of limiting or restricted, uh, restricting mental illness, or maybe some kind of, uh, I mean, the 12th house is about uh, imprisonment, so it could be about some uh, a criminal record or a time when Aquarius was incarcerated that might have been connected with something, maybe a, a career crime uh, or something that was tied into their business or a business related crime. And even in some cases, something uh, associated with information uh, technology or uh, or the even just in general, the underworld, you know, some kind of a, or I should say organized crime. So anyway, well, the next thing up is Chiron will be in Pisces. So uh, as far as April goes from the 1st until the 16th, so the second house is what will be emphasized in highlights. So at this time for Aquarius, this could be about uh, dealing with a certain deception, emotional wounds and suffering, dealing with deception and duplicity, uh, uh, perhaps at... Um, as far as monetary matters go, might succumb to financial fraud and maybe even valuing drugs and alcohol, sadly, at this time. And also, too, uh, this could be about really dealing with unrealistic values and maybe dreaming, maybe being uh, succumbing to some kind of lethargy or maybe fantasizing about making money but not really doing anything about it. Maybe lack of idealism and imagination in terms of how one uh, can generate income, as I state before, unrealistic values, but also um, really a dissipation or dissolving of one's self-esteem and self-worth. But remember that uh, also that, I mean, Chiron uh, is the wounded healer, so in areas with, connected with Chiron and Pisces in the second house you might be struggling with at this time, you could help others dealing with comparable situations and do so with that Pisces-like empathy, compassion, and self-sacrifice. Anyway, last but not least, Chiron will be in Aries as far, excuse me, <coughs> as far as April goes from the 16th until the 30th, so the third house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. So at this time, this could be about the way this can manifest is um, perhaps um, some emotional wounds and suffering due to lack of initiative and enterprise in communications, in the dealings with siblings, uh, with neighbors, perhaps uh, it could even be about maybe acrimonious and contentious situations with siblings and neighbors at this time. In some cases, this could really manifest um, in some kind of uh, Aries like, um, you know, physical uh, situation. I mean, it could be something where there, one might succumb to some injury to the brain. Uh, or some physical facial uh, disfigurement, maybe through an accident or some kind, which could affect one's communication and the brain. If there's a brain issue, one's coherency, uh, of course. Of course, there would be other things that would, I think would have to reaffirm this if this was, say, making an adverse aspect to one's natal mercury. 
uh, as well could be one example or another one maybe may or making uh, an adverse aspect to one's natal Mars because that's about accidents and then and that could often uh, be connected with these issues that I'm uh, talking about but anyway also too maybe just in general uh, not capitalizing on I mean just opportunities to communicate in general at this time or maybe being overly presumptuous and impulsive in speaking uh, it, it could just be something simple like talking over uh, over somebody or or really um, or, or jumping to conclusions on what some what you know based on what part of what somebody said and not allowing them to finish what is being said because Aries energy could be rather uh, impatience and that probably is a vast understatement uh, so anyway people That'll conclude uh, this YouTube. Uh, well, I want, oh, the last thing I want to say about the Chiron and Aries in third house is just remember, people, that Chiron is the wounded healer, and in the ways that you might uh, be struggling and uh, going through emotional wounds and suffering connected with Chiron and Aries and the third house, you could perhaps help others out dealing with comparable uh, situations and do so uh, with a lot of that Aries-like fortitude, um, courage. Um, outspokenness and aggressiveness and assertiveness anyway people that'll conclude this YouTube astrological segment for my Aquarius April 2018 horoscope forecast stay tuned next time where I'll be giving you my Pisces April 2018 horoscope forecast two things I want to get with you on before I head out Firstly, the stars may impel but do not compel and secondly never isolate any single astrological element aspect planetary placement position configuration influence or what have you and make an analysis of a person astrologically speaking based on this alone because astrologically speaking the person is the sum of all their components in their natal chart and not just one until next time people stay well